Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to everyone. All the mothers that are here, all the mothers that are on their way, and all, all, all the mothers that are watching online. So I have the privilege, I guess, to open us up before we begin worship. The worship song that we're going to sing, though, is praise. So I am I heard this story that was true, and it actually happened, and it makes me think of favor. So when I think of mothers, I just think of an overwhelming amount of favor that, I, in my opinion, that mothers receive from our Heavenly Father that us men, the men don't quite get. And it's not a downplay, but if you look at history, I think we were inadequate. Didn't he create the woman from the rib cage of his first creation, which is Adam? So going back to favor, I believe there's a strong essence of favor that are placed on the lives of women. Similar to this type of favor, which kind of transitions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Which kind of transitions? So this story, and this is a true story, and it happened. There was a, uh, a, a guy, I guess you can say he was crazy, but he, uh, he, he heard voices in his head to tell him that he should load the gun and he should go shoot a pastor. So he went out to do it. So when he went out and went to the church, this is a true story, went out to the church, he went to go fire the gun in front of the, like, walk right up to the pastor, fire the gun. When he go to fire, it, it, it misfires. It just locks up. He can't get it. By this time, the congregation actually sees, and they jump, knock the guy down. Mr. C, how does this tie to favor of mothers? Because oftentimes, every, oftentimes, if not every time, a mother, you guys go through so many different challenges and obstacles. And you guys are so creative. You're so amazing. And I truly believe that there is a supernatural essence that's given to you. No matter what comes your way, you always seem to triumph. And it doesn't matter if it's the enemy that tries to come and knock you down, there will be a misfire. And there will be victory for you each time. So I stand, we stand in praise of our Lord, but we also stand to give praise to our mothers. Amen? So you guys going to rise on your feet. We're going to praise the Lord this morning. Amen? Okay. Praise it is. Thank you, Jesus.
Happy Mother's Day. Um, today, Bryson will be saying a verse from John 16, verse 21. It says, a mother gives birth to a child, has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. Bryson meant to say is, I love my mom.
Hallelujah. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We have a short video. You guys can take a seat really quick. Um, no? Good morning, morning, morning. Woo. Today's a special day. Happy Mother's Day. Nine months, right? Ten? Some of them have, woo, short, long, different. We want to bless the tithe and offering today. I tell you this morning, I woke up and I'm driving with my nephew to church. And it's like... Christ reveals something to me, and it's, it's basically foundation. With the Father and His Son, if they're not your foundation to anything that you're doing, it will never reach the potential that it needs to reach to. And I've been questioning that for a while because you're figuring life, you're chasing something, you're trying to set goals. You're trying to reach heights to different things. You're trying to be blessed. And you realize, okay, you, I start out this way. But then at the end, it didn't end up where it needed to end up. It ended up crashing. And the reason why it crashed, or you didn't reach the heights that you need to, because the foundation, the prayer that the Lord you're supposed to give them before you start these 
trials and tribulations, these goals, these heights, these goals, it will never get to where it needs to because there's no foundation. And the Lord wasn't the foundation of what needs to reach the heights that he needs to reach to. So before we start anything, we do anything in life. Like I always say, be detailed about your prayers. Don't start these things without praying and giving your heart to the Lord. Because the ending story will not be the ending story that you think it's going to be. It's going to be more glorious than what you think it is. So we want to go ahead and bless the tithe and offering today. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day, a special day where we could come and share this with our family. For the mothers, your tithe and offering that you gave us, that's so special to our heart. That groom us, some of the mothers that are mothers and fathers today, Lord. Thank you for them. Thank you for growing us, having them in our hearts, have us grooming us. Have us turn into young women and gentlemen at the same time, Lord. Even if your father and mother is not here, you got other father and mother because it takes a community to raise us, Lord, and continue growing us. And everything you say is amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Are we alive? Are we here? Are we present? Because your presence is a presence, right? Like, so there's, there's mothers here. I think, so, you know, it, it should be a happy day. And for those of you who do not have a mother here in this place, you still had a mother that brought you here. Some of you, like our brother D said, you might have spiritual mothers, someone that helped you along the way. They don't necessarily have to have given you life, but the Lord put them in your path to still be there for you. So let's thank those mothers as well, because those are just as important. Because many times, the mother-child relationship can be complicated. But I will tell you, as being a, a child and a mother, I call my mother a lot and ask for forgiveness. So today's word is obedience, love. Because if you have a good mother, she had rules. She was probably strict you probably required obedience. Just like our Lord requires obedience. So today's a, a special day. Um, if anyone knows me at this point, you guys know I'm not big into like Hallmark holidays. I'm just saying. But out of the love and respect for my fellow family and friends who love this stuff, I engage a little because I know it means something to others. I want to be acknowledged every day, as we all should. But what I took from that was the Lord actually told me there's people who want to celebrate you because sometimes they don't remember that thing. So if it takes a Hallmark holiday that you necessarily don't, subscribe to but that might be the very thing that someone says there was a person who was a mother to me there was a person that I need to say I love you and I'm thankful for you there was someone who showed me what a mother should look like when my mother wasn't there so on that note see how the Lord can change somebody because you know I would definitely be in here like we're not doing this <laughs> <laughs> like it's not my thing but sometimes it's good that we are acknowledged in everything that we do 
but we have lives and we are humans and we get beat up and we get tired and we are fighting and brothers and sisters men bear with me i will give you your flowers on your day but he made us for a reason so that we can help you be fruitful and multiply and from your side now ooh, <laughs> let me tell you a mother a mother's love as mr c said it, it, it is supernatural because you don't understand many times what your mother is thinking and why she's asking you to do certain things. What she requires of you as a human being. Because we, as children, I'm sorry to say, we, we don't know. No different than in spiritual, as we walk with Christ, we realize how much we didn't know. So you have to grow. And there has to be a person there that says, hey, not that, don't do this. This might be better. I need you to listen to me. I need you to focus over here. It may not always feel good. Oh my gosh, does that not sound like our Jesus Christ? <laughs> oh, some of you are like, no, I don't say, trust me. Listen, we carry life. I need you to understand that. We carry life. We carry life. You know what a powerful gift that is that the Lord gave us to give life? And then we have to nurture that life. We have to water and, 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 and make sure this, this, this seed is, is, is in the right spot, is, is talked to, is, is cared for, is loved. Even if we are broken, even if we are hurt, even if we are tired, we have to keep going because that seed needs us. I want you to really take the time today, and if there's someone, it doesn't have to be your, your biological mother, but there, if there's a woman in your life that gave you a moment of love, of happiness, appreciate them. Because what you don't understand is when someone gives of themselves and time to you, they are pouring into you what they sometimes don't necessarily have. I need you to understand that. We will pour. There's a supernatural thing that mothers have. We're drained. We're tired. We don't even have it for us, but we will find it for our child. Amen. Do you guys not? I'm, I'm telling you, the women in here, that's why they're saying amen. You have no idea the days that we wake up and we're like, we can't do it. And the Lord is like, watch you do it and watch you do it for that child. There's children I poured into not because I birthed them. But whatever I saw, whatever was in my heart, whatever the Lord put on me, what I saw in my mother, it was you have to help that child the same way because someone, you may want them to help your child that way. You love that child. It's obedient. One of my brothers once told me, he said, when I have a child, I'm going to make sure I send him to your house. I said, why? He said, because you're mean with love because I know you will give them strong, hard love. You're going to tell them what they don't want to hear, but you're going to do it with love because what you don't want to hear sometimes is the very thing that you need in your life. Because at first I was offended. I was like, I'm a loving person in my own way. But I understood what he meant because for me, my love does come with discipline. I feel like it's needed. Sometimes we all need, you know, in Spanish, everybody needs papa. Everybody needs a little papa every now and then. Little, grown, we need it. Obedient love. Today's verses, you can take a picture, write them down, whatever works. It will be short. I want you guys to enjoy your Sunday. Feel blessed. Feel favored. Feel love. Again, obedient.
willing to submit to something, to authority. No apologize. That's, that's, that's what life and love sounds like. What you talking about? We don't apologize for that. Again, this will be short. These are words of, these are just encouraging uh, words that I thought of as far as just mothers and life and what the Lord actually puts in our hearts. Proverbs 22, 6. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Yes, that is a hallelujah. Let me tell you something. There's nothing like putting something into a child and then realizing the child isn't even going the way that you set them to go, right? I, I, there's somebody in here that said, my mother gave me all these things and I, I tried to do it, but I didn't. And I walked away from it. I did my own thing. But for whatever reason, the prayers or, or, or the discipline, it brought me back to that very thing that she actually wanted. It didn't look like I was going to do it, but I never, never, never saw myself actually turning away from it but you come back. Many of you are coming back, whether it's to Christ, whether it's to your family, you're coming back to something. And it's because there was a seed planted. That seed began with the life in your mother's womb. So you may turn, but you will truly not turn away from it. Because if you have a really good praying mama, <laughs> I told you it's supernatural. You're going to come back to your calling. At least I think most of us pray you do. Whether we're here to see it or not. So some of you may have mothers that are not here, but trust me, they are in heaven. They are rejoicing because they see where you are at and that is all that they needed. I, I used to pray and say, I want to see certain things for my kids before I leave this earth. I don't pray that anymore. I said, Lord, I just want to know before they leave this earth that they know you. As much as I want to see it, I might not be here. But Lord, before they leave, let them know you. Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What did I just say? <laughs> that's a mother's love, but that's Christ's love. Because you would hope that your children would have obedience and they would understand If you go back to 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When you are brought to church, usually by a family, or when someone prayed for you, when someone just showed you what Christ looked like, that was them being a disciple of all nations. Because that's how it looks. And many times you see that in the form of a mother or a father. But then that's why they also put that on you. So now you can do that duty for someone else. Because one day you're going to go out. You are going to become mothers and fathers for those of you who are not. And you have a same duty to your children to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we are walking into a baptismal season, I need you to understand that. I love the concept of us going in the water and, and doing that act. But at the end of the day, the baptism is in your heart. I could walk from here to that door and be baptized by the Spirit. A person could sit there and have a conversation with you and you could be baptized by the Spirit because you will be delivered and freed and have acknowledged. And you, I pray that many of you who are going to be mothers and fathers, that you take that into your heart because I pray that you make disciples of all nations. Because that's what we all are in here. We are stemming from our father of faith. Not 
not going to take a lot of your time. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. To obey. Teaching. Commanding. And I am always with you to the very end of age. Some of you don't like authority. As a person who struggled with authority... My husband likes to use this thing against me because one of my old managers, you know, told me something about myself. Sometimes you need someone to tell you something about yourself. So she said, I notice if I ask you to do something, you do it gratefully. She said, but if I tell you, you're going to do it when you want to do it. I don't necessarily like to be told. I was like, wow, do I? I didn't believe it. So, of course, one day I'm at work, and I do believe you got to put that mirror and, you know, take a look at yourself. And she was like, hey, Gloria, I need you to whatever with a case. I looked at her, and in my head, I thought, I can get to it when I get to it. And I was like, oh, she's right. Because 15 minutes later, she said, hey, Gloria, um, do you think when you get a chance? And I was like, yeah, got you. It doesn't sound like obedience. You'll be like, oh, that's not, what, what do you mean? I defied the act of being told to do something because I needed it to be delivered a certain way. Why am I saying this? Because some of you want your mothers and, and, and your, your pastors and your friends and your mother-in-laws, your aunties, your uncles, you want Christ and or the Holy Spirit to talk to you a certain way. Let me tell you something. It's your job to be obedient. It's not that those people's jobs is not the Holy. It's definitely not the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has no reason to talk to you the way that you want to be spoken to. What you need to do is open your ears and start listening and be obedient to it. Because many times you probably did not like the way your mother or father says something. That does not mean that they were wrong. So while you're saying, oh, well, I don't like, I don't know if that's God. It probably is. He just didn't tell you the way you wanted to hear it. Get uncomfortable. Why am I saying that? Like I said, I had to realize I thought I wasn't a disobedient person. And as I walk with Christ, I realize how many times I'm saying, well, I don't know if I want to do that. He didn't ask me. He told me. And many of you are used to being defensive or you want to put a block up because my mother told me this and I don't like it or my teacher said this to me one day and I'm not comfortable with it. I don't like the way they talk to me. Sorry. (laughs) Again, he is your comforter. He will give you peace, and he will give you all that you need. But you need to stop being disobedient. You need to stop being disobedient. Some of you are like, I'm not disobedient. You are. You are disobedient. You don't want to be told what he's trying to tell you. Oh, man. This is, see, this is when a mother's job gets hard. Because it doesn't feel, why is she talking to me like that? You know what that looks like to me? Obedient love. If I didn't want the best for someone, I wouldn't tell them something even though I know it's going to hurt them. Not everything that comes to you is to break you. The Lord will give you people in your life that you may think the things that they said were to break you and it was actually to break down what was bad in you to lift you up and be a better version of yourself. Those are the women, those are the mothers that I say you reach out to. Isaiah 46, 13. Oh, 66, 13. I apologize. As a mother comforts her child, 
so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. So as a mother comforts her child. So the Lord is basically saying, I will comfort all my children. But I love that he compares it to a mother's love. That's the only reason why, because he, his love, he didn't say, no offense, not a father. <laughs> said, as a mother comforts her child. You know, when that baby's crying and wants to be fed and wailing and wants to be changed and sometimes the dad is tired because he's probably doing his job for those that are. Maybe they're tired, but you see, we have, I told you, we have this strength and we go, I'm tired too, but the baby needs to be fed and from me and taken care of. There are no days off. To comfort, to help, to cheer up, to give aid in a time of need, to give a feeling of relief or encouragement. So again, as I said, those times that you are tired and we have to give you energy. Those times that you are sad and we have to give you some positivity. The times where you, you need someone to go ahead and give you, you know, words of encouragement, we have to give from ourselves. This is why you should pray extra for those women. Because again, we are tapping into something that we many times don't even know where it's coming from. I'm sure there's every woman in here that has given life has said, I don't even know how I got through that time. I don't know where that energy came from. You don't. He does. He gave it to you. Because he understands that he gave you the gift of life. And the minute that you bore life, you had supernatural spiritual strength that he gave to you. And if you tapped into that more, you will truly be able to bless nations upon nations upon nations. So on that, I close out with a beautiful, simple verse. We're good? You're fine. We won't let the enemy steal our joy, right? Amen, amen, amen. Proverbs 31, 31. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. I have give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. See, honor her for all her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Some of you are like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get, what do you mean honor her? Honor her. And let her works. This is what I pray for all of you women in here that are mothers. That when you are at your city gate, that when you meet your heavenly father, that you have been honored because your names are written on the hearts of people that you have planted seeds in, that you have loved, that you have cared for, that you have nurtured, that you have raised, that you poured yourself out to unconditionally. That is your works, and it will bring you praise in the presence of your Lord and Savior. Many of you may not have the relationships that you want with a mother. Many of you may have sadness or unforgiveness if there's a time in your life as you walk through Christ you need to forgive you need to understand that there should be grace and I'm sure many of you were still given spiritual mothers love those people honor those women honor those women Honor those women. Only you know how that looks. Because I'm sure these women who spoke life into you told you what they wanted you to look like or what they thought of you. And I, I, as, as far as I know, most women, when we say things, we're going to tell you loving words. So those words, they should 
be exemplified. Like, I want to see it. There's some of you, someone in here told you you're better than that. Be better than that. Someone in here said, I see, I see what Christ looks like in you. You need to start walking in what Christ looks like in you. Some of you just need to love yourself just a little bit more. So, happy Mother's Day. Honor the women in your life. Love. Love one another. My father's in here. I will give you your time. You will have all your shine, but let us have our day. I, I wish you guys a wonderful, blessed Mother's Day. Before we leave, Sister Rosie, well, she's, we've gotten some things for the moms in here, but we will worship, go out with the song, worship team, if everyone may rise, worship, and then we can fellowship afterwards, and you can take your little bag of love from us. Amen. You know what? Hold on. We're going to do a quick prayer, right? Lance. Yes, yeah, you. <laughs> all right, all right. My mic is on, I guess. I'm curveball. Obedience, right? So I'm being obedient. So, Father God, right now, we, we welcome, we ask the Holy Spirit to continue to just cover us, Father God. Cover the mothers right now, dear God. Cover the expecting mothers, Father God. And when I say expecting, that necessarily mean right now in this physical time, Father God, but it could be 10, 20, 15 years from now. So, Father God, I ask right now that the, the, the wounds of every female that is here, that if they follow your word, that they are obedient, that you send them, Father God, their soul made who they're supposed to be with Father God, to allow them to be blessed, to continue to obey your word, which it says to continue to multiply. Father God, I also ask that you multiply our faith, that your word continues to be a, a common sound in our heart, in our mind, no matter what we face each day, dear God. So remind us of how great you are, how good you are to us all the time. And we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. If we feel low, if our spirit may be uncertain, Father God, I ask that as we worship you in this song, that we get a spirit, we get to receive your spirit of peace, of love, of joy, and of happiness. And we give you praise and honor in this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.
God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah. History can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And then my heart, then when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness.
we don't have any announcements except for next week. Some of you are ready to be baptized. Yeah. Amen. I'm excited for you. We should have uh, PJ coming. So he will take part in this. So it, it's going to be a wonderful celebration. Um, yes, so baptism next Sunday. It will be a quick, short service. And that's it. You're going to go be filled with the Holy Spirit, I hope. Your hearts be ready and open to receive all the blessings that may come to you. I'm excited. I'm excited because I know many of you who are doing this, your hearts are like, for Christ, and that's the only thing that you really need. So are the little ones proud of you, excited, but more importantly, where it takes you to be so young and want to do it? Kathy, I'm proud of you. Xander, I'm proud of you. Osiris, I'm proud of you. More than anything, your Father in heaven is proud. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. I've told many of the youth before, I'm excited to see where you've gone. Not who you were, but who you are and who you're becoming. That, that's the same for all of us in this walk. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, a happy Mother's Day. Bible study is this Wednesday. There goes the information. And yes, pray safe travels for PJ coming to visit us. And we will see you all next week. God bless you.